I hope you can um, can hear. And um, once again, I would love to invite you, if you would, uh, please turn with me to the book of Ezekiel. The book of Ezekiel, uh, chapter 2. And um, in just a few moments, I'm going to, uh, to, to share with you, um, you know, even if you, that, that moment that you couldn't hear me, um, and we pray everything stays up and stays live, but it's important tonight uh, that you hear from God, and that's our prayer tonight um, as we come together just to spend a few moments uh, with our Bible open and, and for our Bible study tonight. Um, once again, uh, looks like everything is, is going okay right now. So if you would, uh, if you join me in prayer at this time. Thank you. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, once again, we pause during this day. And Father, we want to thank you for, uh, for taking care of us today. I think it is very safe to say, dear Lord, that, that nobody has cared for us today and loved us today the way you have. And God, we just want to say thank you right now. And God, I thank you for each and every one that is, uh, uh, that is, that is tuned in to this Facebook Live and those that will watch later and those that are part of the YouTube flat platform of watching and being a part of that. God, I just ask now and pray that your will be done, that as we tune in and as we turn in the Word of God tonight, as always, we know that you'll show up, that you'll be with us during this time. And God, I simply ask, as always, that you lead this time. And not only lead this time, but guard this time that we may hear from you God remove any distractions that may come our way and as we open the word tonight and as we read it more specifically as we hear what you said to the prophet Ezekiel Father God may we hear those words as well and apply it to our life to be who you would have us to be and God, as we reflect back on this day, it may find us to a time of coming to repentance and just simply telling you wholeheartedly during this time that we're sorry. And Lord, I do ask for the forgiveness of my sins. But God, as we forward, we want to thank you for your grace and your mercy that you extend to us. And use this time in this evening to strengthen us and equip us for tomorrow. Lord, may your name be lifted up tonight. May your name be praised tonight. And as we gather around our Bible, may we hear from you. Lord, we love you. And we thank you for loving us. And it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. I've, I've asked you to turn with me to the book of Ezekiel chapter 2. And we're going to be looking at tonight uh, a, a very, uh, as we take it out of the word of God of Ezekiel chapter 2 and a portion of chapter 3. It, it looks and it sounds very unique to us as we'll hear tonight and as you've read in the past what God told Ezekiel to do with his word. However, what we're going to look at tonight is, is not uncommon in the Bible. As I've shared with you for the past few weeks now, looking and studying at Ezekiel, and just for a very quick review, Ezekiel has been exiled with the Judeans into Babylon. He has seen the glory of God. He is taking on the burden of God, of carrying the message of judgment to the people of God. After enduring this time of 
conversation with God and listening to God, he has heard God describe the Israelites. We spent a little bit of time looking at the words that, of how God described them. In addition to that, we've kind of slowed down and taken our time to look at the four commands that God gave Ezekiel. The very first command that he gave him in what we've looked at during the vision of him seeing the wheels and the platform and the throne and the cherubim and the creatures, we see and hear God give Ezekiel four commands. The very first command that he gave him was to stand and listen. And Ezekiel said that the Spirit of God lifted him to his feet. And he stood there and he listened to God. And after he stood and listened, Yahweh told him to go and to speak. And then last Wednesday night, we looked at the third command of do not be afraid. And tonight, I'm going to give you the fourth and final command out of this section, that of when God told Ezekiel to receive the word within. Throughout Scripture, in certain locations and different places, God's Word is described as food for the soul. More specifically, Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 8 simply encouraged the Israelites while in the wilderness to not only eat and live off the manna from God, but to take in the manna, or the word of God. In Deuteronomy 8.3, the Bible says, So he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and fed you with the manna which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. We may not be that familiar with Deuteronomy 8.3, but as I read those words, you know exactly where they came from, from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 4, because those were the words that Jesus spoke to the devil while being in the wilderness, wilderness and being tempted. He told the devil that man should not live by bread alone. In the book of Job, Job describes the importance of taking in the Word of God. In Job 23, 12, we find and we hear Job say that he desired the Word of God more than he desired food from God. He says in 23, 12, I have not departed from the commandments of his lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. With your Bible open, I would love for you to join me in reading the Word of God, starting in Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 8. And this is going to carry us tonight to Ezekiel. Did I say Deuteronomy? Ezekiel chapter 2, starting in verse 8. And it will carry us to Ezekiel 3, 3. And with your Bible open, the Word of God says, But you, son of man, hear what I say to you. Now this is God talking to Ezekiel right after telling him, Do not fear, and also right after describing the Israelites as be, being a rebellious house. But you, son of man, hear what I say to you. Do not be rebellious like the rebellious house. Open your mouth and eat what I give you. And Ezekiel says in verse 9, Now when I looked, there was a hand stretched out to me, and behold, a scroll of a book was in it. Then he spread it before me, and there was writing on the inside and on the outside, and written on it were lamentations and mourning and woe. And in three one, Moreover he said to me, Son of man, eat what you find. Eat this scroll and go.
speak to the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that scroll. And he said to me, Son of man, feed your belly, and fill your stomach with this scroll that I give you. So I ate, and it was in my mouth like honey in sweetness. Now, I think we can all agree that that's a pretty interesting those are pretty interesting passages of Scripture of God in this vision. Now, this vision that Ezekiel saw, as we looked at in verse in chapter 1, is still going on. The vision is still there of the throne and of the hand, and now a scroll has been introduced in this vision to Ezekiel. And in Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 8, we see God calling Ezekiel. Now, now, now look at this, please. We see God calling Ezekiel to be different than the people he is carrying the message to. He tells him, God tells Ezekiel, do not be like the house of Israel. Do not be rebellious. In other words, Ezekiel, I need you, I want you, I desire you to be obedient to my instructions and in carrying this message of judgment to the children of Israel. Now, I want us to think about this for just a little, just a little bit in our own life. Meaning, I think there's times in our life that God leads us to a place, to a person, and he expects us at all times, no matter what time, we are where we're supposed to be in the will of God. He expects us to always be obedient. In other words, he expects us not to be like the world. And if we think about just for a moment that maybe, maybe, Maybe there's times that you find it, that I find it difficult to be obedient to the Word and the will of God. So think about this for just a second. What type of motivation did Ezekiel have to see having the luxury of the book and of history and looking back and studying the book of Ezekiel? Think about the motivation... And where did Ezekiel receive the motivation from to carry such a doomy and gloomy message to a rebellious people? I think it is very safe to say that there really wasn't anything to look forward in this message that he was carrying out. And God Almighty encouraged, has encouraged him the Spirit of God has come down upon Ezekiel. It has strengthened him. It has, strength, it has straightened him to be obedient. It was not a message. It was not a message that anybody would look forward much less to carrying. And it sure wasn't a message that anybody wanted to hear. Coming from God Almighty about thee, Judgment of God Almighty. But we have to remember what Ezekiel was seeing. We would say what Ezekiel saw, but also think about and concentrate on what Ezekiel was seeing and what was before him. He was in the presence of God Almighty. The message, the message did not motivate Ezekiel. But the messenger motivated Ezekiel. And that is who should motivate us to be obedient to the will and the word of God in our life. Even though we may feel like we are not equipped, that we may not know enough about the word of God to carry out the will of God. We need to be encouraged by the messenger, and not necessarily concentrating completely on the message, but being obedient in what thus saith the Lord. 
And I truly believe that each morning when we wake up, I've always said, and I'll continue to say, every morning when we wake up, God extends to us new grace and new mercy. And in the morning, when our eyes open, when our lungs inhale and exhale, God is calling us at that particular moment in time to be obedient to the path, to our purpose, and to His plan in our life. And so we move to verse 9, and we see what Ezekiel saw that was laid before him. It was a scroll. Now, just because of, of how I'm wired in nature, I, I wanted to study and look at the scroll for just a moment. And, and, and so if it's okay with you, uh, it is very safe to say that the scroll itself, and we all know what a scroll is and how it works of being rolled up from both ends or sometimes being just rolled up uh, from one end. And we know the scroll and how it works and you, and you open it up like that and, and how it was read. But there's something interesting about this scroll that was laid before Ezekiel when he, saw, when he saw it in the vision. Now, scrolls were written on two different types of material. The, one of the materials that uh, scrolls were written on was, is called papyrus. Papyrus. And papyrus is just a fancy word for what we would call a very thick cardstock type of paper the other material that scrolls were written on was leather however when leather scrolls were used where the where the where the writing was done there was never any writing on the back of the leather uh, the back of the leather and very seldom on papyrus was scrolls written on the front and the back but we see here and we find here that this, this scroll that is before Ezekiel, <coughs> there is something, there are words written on both sides of the scroll. Now, scrolls were used right up until, you kind of remember, right? This is Bible study. Scrolls were used, I want you to know uh, that scrolls were used in standard writing up to the second century. Because that was just prior to, it wasn't until the second century that, 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 that codex was used and that books or leaf books were put together. So during this time, because it was on front and back, we think it was not leather, but papyrus, coming from the plant of papyrus. Well, you may have just been told more than you ever really cared or want to know about a scroll. What's interesting to know is how it was used back then. And it's interesting to know that there was information on the front and the back. Well, when we look at the scroll of what's on the front and the back, we have to find and we have to see the contents of the scroll. And Ezekiel gives that to us. It contained three types of informational words from the message of God. The Bible tells us in 2.10, that was what was written on it was lamentations. What was written on it was mourning. And what was written on it was woe. Now those are three ingredients. Those are three forms of speech of words that were used that are very synonymous to the contents of a funeral. And what I mean by that is simply the words lamentations is synonymous to that of a eulogy to that of remembering, that of mourning of the family and of the friends, and the woe that comes from a funeral and from mourning. So we're told, and it's reiterated again, that this was not a happy message that was getting ready to go out to the children of Israel. And in three times, Ezekiel is told to eat the scroll. And after you eat it, we see the other associated command that God gave Ezekiel. We see not only to take the word of God within, but we see once again and we hear God say to go and speak the word that's from within you, that I have given you. Well, speak what? Speak what? 
to speak God's Word. And only God's Word. The issue with the writing on the front and the back was symbolic that it was all of God's words. That there was no room, there was no room in this scroll, and there was no room in the message that was going out to the children of Israel. There was no room for Ezekiel's words, but only care to them God's word. So the question comes up tonight, did Ezekiel, in fact, literally masticate swallow the Word of God literally within? Well, that's the question. And here's my answer. I don't know. He could have literally ate the scroll. Because it's very common in other places in Scripture, Jeremiah ate the Word of God in Jeremiah fifteen sixteen. Jeremiah says, your words were found and I ate them. And your word was to me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. In the book of Revelation, John eats the word of God. In 10, 8 through 10, the Bible says, Then the voice which I heard from heaven spoke to me again and said, Go, take the little book which is opened in the hand of the angel who stands on the sea and on the earth. So I went to the angel and said to him, this is John talking, so I went to the angel and said to him, give me the little book. And he said to me, take and eat it. We'll make your, it will make your stomach bitter, but it will be as sweet as honey in your mouth. Well, now we see once again that the Word of God is sweet like honey. But yet, just like with John, and just like Ezekiel, it later became bitter once he was going out and delivering the bitterness about the judgment to the people of God. In 3.14, if, we, if your Bible's open, just look over at Ezekiel 3.14. Ezekiel has said it's sweet as honey, and now, we, now comes the bitterness just like with John. So the Spirit lifted me up and took me away, and I went in bitterness. So what does all this mean about taking the Word of God within? I will tell you that it is believed that it wasn't a literal eating, chomping down and chewing and swallowing the Word of God. But it is looked at as a figure of speech. And what I mean by that is God was telling Ezekiel to read, to meditate, and to memorize the Word of God. To read, to meditate, and to memorize the Word of God. And so we come to a thought tonight. Do we eat, you and I, do we eat the Word of God like we should? I've heard people say, that, that, that I just don't know how people memorize and quote Scripture the way they do. I, 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 can't, I, I can't remember things. I, I can't remember Scripture like that. Well, if you've ever said that, I want to encourage you tonight and share with you the importance of eating the Word of God. You can do it. Last night, I, I'm pretty sure it was last night, Rhonda and I were watching a show. And on that show was the actor, Lee Majors. 
Now, one of my favorite shows of Lee Major, and some of you may remember, was called The Six Million Dollar Man. And I, I, I said, when he came on the screen, I said, isn't that, um, isn't that, um, y'all, y'all understand what I'm doing here? And, and Rhonda said, Lee Majors. And we were both sitting there looking at the TV. And out of nowhere, Rhonda said these words, and I quote, Steve Austin. An astronaut, man barely alive. Gentlemen, we can rebuild him. We have the technology. We have the capability to make the world's first bionic man. Steve Austin will be that man. Better than he was before. Better. Stronger. Faster. Can I get a witness? And I sat there and heard her say the opening monologue to a show that was on probably some 30 years ago. And she said it word for word. And I just kind of did like that to her after she was finished. Don't tell me you can't remember things. You remember birthdays, don't you? You remember Social Security numbers. Now stay with me for just a moment, please. You remember addresses. And some of us can still remember phone numbers. Now not everybody can remember phone numbers anymore because we plug them in our phone. But you remember phone numbers. Some of you know every lyric to a lot of songs. You can recall, you can recognize when it comes on the radio, and you'll go to your brain and go to that file and start singing that song and not miss a beat and not miss a word. Mothers and daddies remember the birth date of their child. But not only the birth date, because that's easy, right? But mothers can rattle off whether one child or ten children. They can rattle off the birth weight, the birth length, and the time of birth. And you just file it away, and you never forget it. My point is, we can remember anything we want to remember if it's important to us. There is something about being able to, there is something about being able to recite and being able to memorize the Word of God. One of my favorite Bible passages is when Jesus says in John 14, My peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. There's something about Scripture from memory, of that coming from within, that can bring peace to any circumstance, can bring peace to any situation. There's something about bringing the Word of God up from within. Is the Word of God important to you? That's only a question that you and I can answer. 
And I just want to encourage you tonight. And I am closing. I just want to encourage you tonight to work on taking the Word of God within. There's countless benefits of knowing the Word of God. Two of my favorite is simply being able to recall and memorize and recite Scripture simply means we will always have the Word of God with us. Always. Has anybody come up to you today or the past few days and their life is a mess? They've started telling you some things that are going on and are going wrong. Man, do you know what would help at moments like that? The Word of God. I don't carry my Bible around with me all the time. There's something about having within the Word of God. And you know what? When you're alone, when you're by yourself, and man, things are just getting heavy, you will always have the Word of God to meditate on. If there was one thing the children of Israel needed, it was to hear the Word of God. And I don't mind going on record saying, if there's one thing today that the people need to hear today, it is the Word of God. So our thought is, and we close with, are people hearing the Word of God from you? And are they hearing the Word of God from me? Father God, we pause and we say thank you tonight for your Word. All of it. Father, help us, encourage us, strengthen us, give us courage, give her boldness, give us the willingness to sit down and to take in the Word of God. There's just something about Your Word, Lord. It'll bring calmness to calamity. It'll do away with worry. It'll bring peace during pressure. It'll bring stability to unstable times. God, tonight, do in our life with the Word of God only what you can do. And then, God, we close our prayer with, continue to strengthen us and equip us to not be like a rebellious nation, but to be obedient to what thus saith the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, and may God bless you.